Hello and welcome to Author Academia. How to destroy writer's block. Do you think you're experiencing writer's block? Don't worry, almost every author to ever exist has felt the inability to simply... Uh, oh, oh, there we go. To simply put words on the page. To give a popular example, J.K. Rowling admits that she suffers along with the rest of us muggles in combating white page terror. Writer's block is annoying, frustrating, and unproductive, and this is why writers and authors alike strive to defeat it. Finding the confidence or motivation to begin or continue a project can be an uphill battle, but today Author Academia will stand alongside you, and together we will work to slay your demons of doubt. Pick up your pencils and join the fight to freely write. As Sun Tzu wrote in The Art of War, if you know your enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. So let's get to know our enemy, who is conveniently also us so we get to skip a step and figure out what is and what causes writer's block. Didn't see that one coming, did you, Zoo? Writer's block, as defined by Patricia Houston in her article Resolving Writer's Block, is a stress reaction that paralyzes the ability to put thoughts into words. I know this feeling all too well, as I'm sure many of you watching do. However, what you might not know is the psychological factors which cause this ailment. According to Houston, writer's block is caused when the right or creative side of the brain seeks to create, in this case write. This induces the left or analytical side of the brain to anticipate all the problems that this action could entail, causing it to go into overdrive and inhibit the ability to write. In other words, writer's block happens when the right side of the brain, whom we'll call Creative Clyde, tries to create something and your left brain, named Judgmental Jeb, immediately trashes whatever Clyde was working on. The two get into an argument and the fight gets so heated that Clyde doesn't get anything creative done and as a consequence, Jeb doesn't actually get anything real to judge either. The two sides of the brain accomplish nothing, and it is in this nothingness that the monster known as Writer's Block comes to fruition. So that's how Writer's Block is born. Now, how do we destroy it? Thankfully, Writer's Block isn't a permanent condition, and it needs the argument between creativity and criticism to exist. The solution is to simply stop the argument between the two sides of your brain, specifically stopping judgmental Jeb. Now, Jeb isn't a bad guy. The analytical side of your brain serves all sorts of practical functions, and is especially useful in editing and puzzles. Judgmental Jeb is only criticizing Clive because he wants to protect you from getting your feelings hurt. But as good-hearted as Jeb's intentions may be, right now, he's the antagonist. It's likely nobody is going to read your first few drafts of writing besides you. Jeb is criticizing something that A, hasn't been created yet, and B, when created, is meant for your eyes only. Jeb is blocking your creativity for unrealistic reasons, and it's because of him that the monster of writer's block was born. So stand up for a creative clive and tell Jeb to back off. So what are some specific non-personified strategies that you can use to stop your inner critic and defeat writer's block? Houston recommends quite a few different strategies. The strongest and most reliable seems to be common advice here on YouTube, which makes me proud. It's wonderful to see so many creators recommend something truthful and honest. Good job, guys. The strategy is to give yourself permission to be less than perfect. I like Fast Screenplay's version, which is give yourself permission to write garbage. Let me tell you a dirty secret accomplished writers sometimes fail to mention. You'll probably have realized this by now, but all writing starts off as crap. It's during the editing process where your writing will really start to shape up, but you aren't there yet. Get the words down first and then edit later. Don't let your inner critic tear you down before you even get started. Save it for later. Judgmental Jeb will have his time to shine, but first you gotta give Creative Clive a chance. Houston's article has many more suggestions. I'll summarize the rest of these briefly because I don't think they will be effective as the writing garbage advice. But different techniques work for different people, and I want you to have the best shot at destroying writer's block. Cultivate patience. Force yourself to start writing something, even if it is just a title, an outline, or a few sentences of nonsense. When the page isn't blank anymore, it could help you push past the blockage. Analyze tasks. Break down the tasks and set a goal. For example, set a timer for 20 minutes and write as much of an intro or chapter as you can. Schedule breaks. If you get stuck on a sentence, leave it and come back later. Also, give yourself positive feedback. 
Writing conditions. Try to find a comfortable place to write. It doesn't have to be perfect. Houston also recommends that if your writer's block is not fixed on the steps above, it may be because you suffer from imposter syndrome and you don't feel like an actual writer or author. This could make for a whole other video, but what Houston recommends in this instance is to either pretend that you are a writer or to find your own voice. I highly recommend you go to the description and give Resolving Writer's Block a read if you are interested in any of the techniques I just mentioned, or if you think you are suffering from imposter syndrome. I'll also link several other YouTubers who have good advice to share on this topic. I hope you found something helpful in this video today. If you did, be sure to check out my other video on where to start writing. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.